Welcome to our next topic. This is topic 8, insulation, the water cycle, and climate. Today we're going to discuss insulation, and we're going to describe the factors that affect the intensity of insulation at different locations on Earth's surface. So what is insulation? If you recall from our prior units, insulation is a combination of three words that scientists came up with to describe incoming solar radiation. So this is sunlight coming into Earth, and Earth receives almost all of its energy from the sun. In which wavelengths does maximum intensity of insulation come into Earth's surface? So the maximum intensity, which means the majority of the insulation, reaches Earth in the visible light spectrum. You can see here when we're looking at how much reaches Earth's surface, visible light, or all our rainbow colors, is the majority of what actually is absorbed by Earth's surface. The shorter wavelengths, like ultraviolet, X-rays, gamma rays, are absorbed or reflected by Earth's atmosphere and the ozone layer. Earth re-radiates, or puts off radiation in the infrared or heat energy part of the electromagnetic spectrum. This is also referred to as terrestrial radiation. So Earth re-radiates infrared heat energy and absorbs mostly visible light. This diagram here is showing the sunlight coming in, reflecting some off by the atmosphere, absorbing some in the ozone layer, what gets down to Earth is the visible light spectrum. It's absorbed and then re-radiated as infrared energy, which traps in this heat um, in the atmosphere by the greenhouse gases. So the troposphere, which is the first layer of Earth's atmosphere, is mainly heated by re-radiated terrestrial infrared radiation from Earth. So what factors affect the intensity or strength of insulation? The first factor is the angle of insulation. Next is the duration of insulation, which that would be how long the insulation or the sunlight is lasting. And third would be the type of surface the insulation strikes. So what is the angle of insulation? If we look here at these, um, these little diagrams on the bottom, you can see that the sun here is striking the surface at a direct 90 degree angle that also can be called perpendicular to Earth's surface. While in this picture, it's showing it at an angle, a slanted angle of only 30 degrees compared to the surface. So which of these surfaces would heat up the quickest? I think that you could recognize that if you have the light shining directly onto the surface, it's going to heat this area up much more quickly than if that, uh, that energy is coming in at an angle. And the same thing happens on Earth's surface. Where the sunlight is coming in directly, you have a much warmer climate. Where it's angled, it gets a little less warm, and when it's really angled or slanted, you end up in colder uh, climates near the poles. So uh, uh, the angle of insulation is a measure of how high the sun is in the sky, and we measure this from the horizon up to the position of the sun. So if you put your one arm straight out in front of you, that would be your horizon, and if you put your other arm up pointing at the ceiling, that would be a 90 degree angle. Okay, that the sun would be coming down at, where if you then lower your, up your top arm down, it would show how the um, angle is slanted compared to the horizon or the surface of Earth. So what happens as this angle of insulation increases or decreases? So if we use a flashlight, which we'll be using in class, to demonstrate how, what happens, and you shine this flashlight directly down at the surface, you're concentrating all of this energy, the same light from the bulb, is affecting this area in a much smaller location. If you take your flashlight and slant it, the same amount of energy is coming from the flashlight bulb, but over a wider area. So it's spreading that same energy out over a wider area. So which area would heat up more quickly? So again, your direct 90 degree angle or perpendicular to the surface is going to heat up quicker. So when you have that direct angle of insulation, it will heat up that area. It'll give more insulation, more intense insulation over, um, over that period of time. Where if you slant that angle or if the sunlight's coming in slanted, it's going to take a lot more energy to heat that area up. As the angle of insulation increases, the intensity also increases. So this heat gets concentrated in a smaller area. If you decrease the angle of insulation, which means it's getting more slanted, the um, intensity of insulation is less, it's less absorbed, and it's reflected more by the surface, and you spread that heat out over a larger area. 
So now with this same thing happens on Earth's surface. If you look at the surface of Earth, if you've got the sun coming in here, okay, all across Earth's surface, the direct rays are going to be concentrated near the equator where it will get more and more slanted as you get towards the poles. Why do you think that that happens? So if we look at a low angle, you're going to have less absorbed by the surface, where a high angle, or closer to a 90 degree angle, more will be absorbed by the surface. And this is because Earth is not only curved, but its um, axis is also tilted. So it changes the, uh, the angle of insulation that Earth receives at different locations across its surface. So where would intensity on Earth be the greatest and the least? So as we just said, when you're closest to the equator, you'll tend to have more direct rays of insulation. Where as you get closer to the poles, that angle gets more slanted. So at the equator, the sun's rays are direct, which means 90 degrees, or perpendicular to the surface. The intensity is very low at the poles. The sunlight comes in slanted at a low angle, and this causes cooler temperatures at those locations. So if your latitude is increasing, so if we figure that the equator has a latitude of zero and the North Pole has a latitude of 90, as you increase latitude, what happens to the angle and intensity of insulation? So since we know that the um, intensity is uh, greatest at the equator and less at the poles, as your latitude is increasing, your angle and intensity of insulation is decreasing. So if we look at different areas on Earth's surface, here we have a tropical location with palm trees and we have direct rays coming in. And here we have a, a middle latitude area where we've got slightly slanted rays coming in. And here we're looking at a polar location as indicated by the igloo with very slanted insulation. Okay, this would represent some place near the equator in the mid-latitude, which is around 45 degrees, which is similar to where New York State is located, and near the poles. At what time is the angle and intensity of insulation greatest? So if you want to think about over the course of the day, what time would you say that we have the highest angle and strongest sunlight? So I think we could all agree that that usually happens around noon. That is when the sun is highest in the sky, and that tends to be then when the sunlight is most intense. We look at our little cartoon here, Molly isn't happy about, but you can see the little piggy telling the slice of bacon that next time it should use some sunscreen. So again, looking at the surface of Earth, because Earth is tilted on its axis and has a curved surface, the sunlight coming in is all parallel, each angle, the sunlight is all parallel coming in, but is received in different intensity because of Earth's curved surface and because of Earth's tilted axis, which changes as the Earth revolves around the sun, the um, angle that that insulation comes in at. So higher latitudes, which are closer to the poles, will be more slanted, and there'll be less concentrated energy, which results in cooler temperatures. And locations closest to the equator have more concentrated, higher angle insulation, which leads to warmer temperatures. And this picture also shows how the direct light coming in is more concentrated, and the more it gets slanted, the more that energy is spread out over a wider area, which means it's less um, energy is being absorbed per area. And that ends section 8.1, insulation.